What's cooking today? Paul Stern, Jack Roberts, Michael Ford on assignment. Jack, let's kick it off. Sure, let's do it. Patrick Olson is here, and he is editor-in-chief of Cars.com. Hello, Patrick. How are you? Patrick, yeah. are you there? Patrick. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Thank you very much. You? Okay. We could hear you. Now, you were with the L.A. Times for a while, weren't you? Very briefly, yes. Okay. Uh, so tell us, what's going on in the world of cars? I mean, there's been a lot of negativity, and I think you would agree with that, whether it be the economy, whether it be shutting down car companies, whether models are not being made anymore. Is there any good side to the car industry? What's happening now? What can people uh, take advantage of right now as far as getting a new car? Well, I think, you know, one of the things that's great for, uh, for cars right now is that uh, the industry has sort of been to the abyss in 2009, and it's definitely come way back from, from that point. Uh, car sales are up. They're not as up as much as uh, at the level they were in 2007, but they're, they're starting to make their way back. Um, I do think it's still a buyer's market. I think that the shop, the smart consumer can negotiate, can haggle with car dealers, and, and come away with a pretty good deal. Are, are there some pretty good cars of note, especially uh, if I could uh, kind of uh, prime the pump by saying some American-made cars? Sure. Um, one of the things we've done just this week is release our list of the American-made index, and we look at really three different factors in compiling that list. We look at the percentage of domestic parts in the car. We look at the final assembly point, which has to be in the U.S., um, and we look at how the car sells in the U.S., with the presumption being that the better it sells, the more suppliers and auto workers are employed to build those cars. What are some of the good ones people are looking at? So number one on our list for this year is the Toyota Camry, which may surprise some people. Number two is the Honda Accord. Number three is the Ford Escape. Um, and what it really talks about is you can't just trust the, the badge on the car to tell you whether or not a car was built in the U.S. Toyota, Honda, Hyundai are building cars. In the US. Ford, GM, Chrysler are building cars here, but they're also building them in Mexico. They're building them in Canada. They're sometimes imported from South Korea. So. If you want to be diligent about that, you really have to do some research. Uh, Patrick Olson is our guest from Cars.com. Let me ask you, Patrick. Uh, Toyota, I think you would agree, had many, many problems, major problems. Many yeah. of those problems were connected with PR, the way they handled it. They did not just seem to know what they were doing when they were trying to answer questions. Now, they got their act together finally. But how can you trust a company that, I mean, has so much problems with explaining themselves? I mean, the American people were looking for answers. They were getting nothing. Now, that has been corrected eventually, but it took forever. And I think that's going to be a, a black eye for them. Well, I think definitely they've, they've definitely had troubles, and I think we've definitely seen their car sales take a hit because of it. And I think consumers should make sure that they, they feel comfortable in whatever car that they're going to buy. Um, and for you know, the camera, which is number one on our list, I would tell consumers make sure that the recall work that was requested or demanded by the government is done before they buy that car. But... You know, in the long term, Toyota has a, has a pretty good reputation for, for reliability. Yep. I think now they understand that they need to get back to that, that they can't just be on the search to be number one in the world. They need to still be the most reliable car in the world, and they've got a lot of work to do to make up that ground. Yeah, I would hate to say that the way they responded to a potentially crisis situation uh, kind of uh, kind of created a hysteria of its own that uh, perhaps when I uh, looked uh, down the line after the fact, uh, maybe some of the hysteria was unwarranted. Well, well I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, think I, I think, Patrick, anybody can, have not, the not, well, anybody, anybody can have the problems Toyota has. Everybody understands that. It's exactly right the way they handled it. And I do not think they put their best foot forward. It's not the actual the, the making of the cars. It's a follow-through and explaining themselves, and they did that very poor. Every, by every account, they did it unbelievably poorly, and the American people didn't know what was going on for about three or four months. Yeah, I think you, you even see Toyota executives come out and say, you know, we've not handled this well. We need to we need to do better at it. Okay. What else we got on the list? Um, so we got through the Escape. Number four on our list is the Ford Focus. Number five, the Chevy Malibu. Number six is I the like the Chevy. Well, by the way, I like that Chevy Malibu. I've seen the commercials. I, like, I, like I think they have that Howie, Howie Long uh, yep. football player. I like that do car, those yeah. things. Yep. And that looks like a very nicely styled car. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's done very well for them. It was a huge improvement over the previous generation. And it really speaks to what the domestic three have been doing in the last 18 months, two years, where they're making better cars, they're putting more effort into making sure the quality is there, and they're making sure that the reliability is there. Because... 
they understand that no one will buy them just because they're domestic anymore, that they need to offer value, they need to offer uh, style, and they need to offer quality, or else people will, will go somewhere else. Okay, let's continue. Sure, we got uh, number seven is a Ram 1500 pickup truck. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, boy, a little but, muscle there. All right. yeah. Making yeah. its way to the list. <laughs> What's interesting is the F-150 from Ford used to dominate this list. Yeah, it, and it was number one for several years, number two last year, but now it's fallen off the list because its domestic parts content has dropped from 75% to 55%. Um, and you know, that's part of a, a reality for Ford and the other domestics is that they're becoming more global, you know, and they, they are less um, about just North America, and they're now about serving the entire world. Okay, so that Dodge is a good one. What else? What, finally what? on the list, we have the... Go ahead. We've, got the, we've got the Toyota Tundra at number eight, the Jeep Wrangler at number nine, and the Toyota Sienna at number ten. Mm. Okay, I, I have a question. You had mentioned this uh, uh, briefly, and I, I'm just wondering about this. If you buy a Toyota, and uh, I, even though all the criticism I mentioned about Toyota, I probably would consider buying a Toyota. And you get the Toyota, how can you be sure it's coming from a plant here in the United States? If they, uh, everything you buy in the United States, does it come from a plant? Was it built here, or is it built in Mexico? No. So the, that... That's an excellent question. The reality, one of the reasons we did this list is because consumers have two stickers on every new car where they can go and check and make for sure that their car is built in the U.S. So there's a sticker that tells you the percentage of domestic parts that are in that car, and then there's a, another sticker that will tell you the final assembly point for that car. So if you're really concerned about that, there are two, two points on every car required by law that will tell you those, those two facts. I've heard that uh, was the case with some uh, Toyota models, that uh, some are that are built in the United States will have a certain uh, vehicle identification number, and ones that are built, uh, let's say, in Japan would have a different one, and it could be easily uh, they, they also have, They also have a plant in Mexico, don't they? Uh, I don't know about the Toyota having a plant in Mexico. I can tell you, though, that you're absolutely right that the VIN will be different. If it's built in Japan, the first letter in the VIN will be a J. But I can tell you, though, that a car has to have the sticker that says, the final assembly point for this car is this location. They can't get by it. So that's the thing to really look for. If, is if there a difference, though, with the quality cars, of the vehicle in all reality? I mean, let's be perfectly honest. That's what we're talk That's what we probably want to know. Sure, oh, I would say oh, you know, absolutely, the reality absolutely. is that the, they can't afford to have a, a difference in quality from a plant in Canada to, to the U.S., to Mexico, to South Korea, uh, because consumers will, will sniff it out. Yeah. There it goes. So identical quality check. Well, I, I, I may uh, you're grumble little, a little bit you're about that. You're a little biased, Jack. Jack. You're a little a, biased. A lot, a lot of the quality checks here biased. in the United States are a little bit better than other places. And I, 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 that's my belief, anyway. You're entitled to your bias, Jack. I, I, I got one question for you, Patrick. I mean, you deal with cars all the time. You're the expert. What car would you buy? Now, keep it, and forget the list, all right? What, give, give us something with a little something would, under would the hood, you buy? too. If you were getting something yeah. for your, your family and, and yeah. your use, what car would you buy? Yeah, let's get comfortable. Well, so let me be clear. Is it for my family or is it just for me? Because for me, I might go out and say buy a new Ford Mustang oh, with yeah. a V6 engine that gets 31 miles per gallon. Ooh. That might be the thing I bought. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Talking about a Ford Mustang looking pretty well, good. Oh, yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, that, that's a very good answer. Pat, Patrick Olson, he's with us from Cars.com, editor-in-chief. Patrick, you're welcome here anytime. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, guys. Bye, Patrick. Patrick Olson. So we buy a Ford Mustang. The guy's got class. Good stuff, and those Chevys aren't too bad either. Yep. And is it Chevy or Chevrolet? Well, they want to bring back Chevy. I've always said Chevy, but it is Chevrolet. And they, they, they want to sort of extend it and make the term now Chevrolet, but it is a Chevy. It's a Chevy. Do over your Chevy to the levee. There it is. It's a Chevy. Yeah. We'll talk about it sometime. Homeowners, how would you like to receive a $1,500 tax credit and save up to $465 a year on high energy bills? Hello Windows wants to show you how for free. It's time to replace those drafty, sticky, outdated windows. Hello Windows makes window and door replacement easy every step of the way. You'll enjoy informative, no-pressure shopping, free expert advice, and a free in-home consultation. Plus, we handle everything for you. Save money on your utility bills. Make your home look beautiful and get a $1,500 tax credit at the same time. Call for a free, no-pressure, in-home consultation with a Pella Window expert. Ask about the limit.